Hello, and welcome to another episode of Solipsis Watched. I'm your host, The Social Solipsist, and this week, I watched Windfall from 2022. Now, uh, I think at some point I must have seen an ad or something for this movie, um, because it feels like yet another one where somehow I have some memory of seeing a trailer of some kind, one of those things that slips past all of my ad filters and things like that. Um, but again, once again, I am pleasantly surprised that it got me to actually watch something uh, that I probably wouldn't have otherwise found uh, had I um, not gone looking for it. Uh, this is a fairly minimalist film uh, in terms of its cast. It is very much a bottle movie um, and involves a very minimal amount of elements both in the um, characters and cast and the locations uh, and I really like that kind of thing because as I've talked about before usually it means it's forced the the filmmakers to make something interesting because one of the one of the nice things about having limitations is you have to, if you set yourself limitations, then you have to figure out how to work around them. And that often leads to, uh, invention, you know? Um, uh, so it, it brings something that's not entirely unique to the table, but, um, brings something that is definitely interesting. And I think is worth checking out. It is going to be a little bit hard to talk about this in direct terms because it is so minimal in its plot and um, and sort of story beats and things like that. But what's really the focus of it in the first place is the characters and their relationship to each other and the uh, situation that they are in and the location that they are in. The setup is really very simple. Um, the small cast is all forced into what very quickly um, is shown to be a deeply uncomfortable situation for all people involved. Um, compared to a lot of uh, sort of similar movies, um, this is not one that's necessarily about power dynamics, at least not in the focus. Um, compared to something like Panic Room or something like that, um, this is not about one, the trading of power dynamics and sides and things like that. This is really about everybody involved. I guess this is the most minor of spoilers. It's about everybody involved being uncomfortable and in a situation that they are not ready or prepared for um, and weren't expecting to be in and aren't really sure how to handle and are muddling through. And so um, it's it's a really interesting way of investigating who people are um, especially because we don't really know these characters in any major way prior to the start of the film the start of the film is really not an introduction to the characters at all it's an introduction to the situation and the characters that are in it i don't believe any of the characters have names at all because it's not really relevant what's relevant is um the the relationship dynamics and the emotional dynamics between all of them and so as we go on it's not really about um learning even who these people are it's not even ultimately about seeing an arc it's about seeing the dynamics themselves a lot i would consider this in many ways a character study of sorts but typically a character study is about watching a character have an evolution, have a, uh, a, a beginning that they've already established themselves, who they are, and then by the end, learning something, something happens to them that changes who they are, who their outlook and their relationship to the, the people around them in their world. This is very focused just on what's happening in the moment. And what the characters are learning about each other, not about what they're learning about themselves or what they're, they're changing about themselves due to extenuating circumstances. It's about seeing, okay, what did these two people not know about each other at the beginning of this scene? What did 
this person say that the other person noticed? What did that person know? What about that did that person pick up on? Why did that person pick up on that thing? What about that person made them notice a specific thing the other person said? And so this is really, really focused just on the in the moment um, exploration of personality. In a lot of ways, I think it is more compelling because you don't know who these people are. Um, you do, it's not trying to hide by any means who these people are. There is a concept um, of each individual. And it's very clear that um, especially, primarily the three main characters are, um, uh, or the three main actors are, uh, have a very good idea of who their character is and what their motivations are, even if that is never directly shown on screen, um, because it influences their dynamics and it adds um, a, a liveliness to the world that feels extremely voyeuristic to be able to look and say, uh, look at what just happened and say, that was completely out of the ordinary or that is not what I expected that character to do. And the the reason why I didn't expect that is because I didn't know who they were. Now I know something because they learned something about, you know, somebody else. It changed the dynamic. And so the whole thing is this sort of ever shifting landscape of um, who is, uh, who is, who, who, who each person is. I don't really know how to explain it dramatically better than that. Um, with the whole thing being very limited in scope, um, the importance of setting and um, production is extremely uh, substantial, of course. Um, when you're spending most of your time in just a couple of rooms, just a couple of shots, those things need to be dressed impeccably the characters need to be made up just right they need to be wearing you know the exact uh the exact right things um the the key details are that much more important and i think this movie does a really excellent job there are some cinematic choices that i don't necessarily love in particular this does fall into the sort of trap of having a visual aesthetic that has been fairly dulled down you know in its color keying um or, or color grading that um i think makes it look muddy so cinematography that is uh, this is this is a movie with some pretty substantially positive cinematography some really interesting um camera work working in tight spaces following characters in unique ways uh, that looks really impressive, but unfortunately, doing due to some of the post-processing choices, um, including the color grading, sometimes it looks a little bit too muddy, and that does add a certain um, emotional aesthetic to the whole thing, um, and it does use that to some extent. But I feel like it does a disservice to what otherwise could be a very beautiful movie or at least one that has more dynamics in its visuals. There are a couple of scenes that sort of um, manage to get away from it a bit, or at least individual shots in scenes that are um, put to much better use. And I think the most, the saddest part is seeing that um, they actually make very good use of uh, shadow and light and dark. But again, the some of those dynamics, rather than being um, pushed up in post-processing, are pushed down by um, the, the, the color and shadow grading. Um, so that's rather unfortunate. Um, as far as... Uh, some of the other production elements go the music is really really good i i like it quite a lot it is made uh entirely in this fairly i don't want to call it a quartet um i didn't I, if i rewatch this i'll i'll pay attention to it more closely but there's a very limited number of instruments uh in a sort of classical um it's tr very un non-traditional but it's like uh i picked out um like an oboe and 
I watched this a couple of hours ago. Um, it, like an oboe and a cello, and I think a vi- uh, either a violin or viola, and like one or two other things. Um, and they are composed in really interesting ways that um, are not the. It's not the kind of score that fades into the background, but it's not the kind of score that is trying to. Um, override the scene either and like tell you how to feel with with musical emotion it very very much works in tandem with what's on screen Um, and the uh, the way that it syncs with events on screen um, second to second is very very good and worth um, appreciating because that is not something that many movies bother to do anymore Um, great uh great classical like orchestral score that uh i feel needs special call out um as far as the overall feeling of the movie i'm still sort of processing it because the dynamics and the overall arc of the story even though it is fairly simple even though it is much more about um the characters interactions the arc of the story is unique and interesting on its own. Um, and it is, um, you know, I don't think I want to say any more about the, the plot. Um, just cause I'm, I'm, I'm worried I'll, I'll spoil, uh, any element of it. Um, I think it's generally very good. It's, not necessarily what you would expect. I don't think anything really about this movie is necessarily what you would expect. Um, There are one or two plot beats that I think are overdone, um, that I think are in concept actually really good, but in full composition, when all of the elements come together, are a bit too over the top, um, that they strike as uh, a little bit tonally misdirected. They end up... Uh, I, I hesitate to say this because I don't want to skew anybody, but there are a few things that go towards being a little bit cheesy. And I don't think the movie intends for it to go that way. The movie does have a very significant undertone of dark comedy, of black comedy of sort of um, all, all of these very real but very hapless, somewhat idiotic people doing um, very human things. And by human, I mean stupid and bad. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's, where, where was I going with this? It's, it's, um, it does have a really good comedic undertone that never pops out that much. But again, there are those couple of, there's a few individual shots and scenes where it's just like, Oh, it's, it's trending a little bit into the cheese. And I do not think it means to be there at all. Um, this is a movie. I don't think I've heard anyone ever talk about. Admittedly, it's not that old and it's very possible that because this was a Netflix acquisition that it just got buried in Netflix's massive massive catalog, especially with the tendency for people to often just, uh, with whatever streaming service, just watch their, their old standbys, their classics, the things they love. I blame no one for that, but it does mean that a lot of um, quite decent movies uh, on whatever platform end up buried and barely seeing release because they just fall through the cracks i think this might that might be what happened here if by any chance you have seen this movie i would be fascinated to hear how you found out about it if you've shown it to anybody and what your what uh what your thoughts are on it um because i think it's it's unique and um it's definitely it has a certain um has a certain thing towards it that it I'm actually not sure when this was produced. There's an element of this that says to me that it might have been produced around 2020. Um, 
but uh, that should not be a black mark against it by any means. The only reason I'm thinking of that is because there are several other movies, many other movies, in fact, over the last over the last like three years that have come out that are um, uh, se- whose settings are limited for that exact reason. That is not a plot point at all in this movie. That's not relevant at all. And in fact, if I've said that and you can't stop thinking about it, I apologize. But that isn't uh, that isn't an element of it at all. Just kind of popped into my head. Anyway, uh, yeah, let me know if you see this one. It's pretty short. It's a bit over 90 minutes, I think. Uh, maybe not even. Uh, and uh, I think you could do worse things with your time. Um, yeah, great performances. Good stuff. Thank you guys for watching another episode of Solps is Watched. I've been your host, The Social Solipsist, and I'll see you guys next time.